Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome to Our Issues Birmingham. Today's guest is Heather Hood. I'm going to call you the Executive Director of Project Grace Haiti. That's it. How about that? That's is perfect. that a good Thank title? You. That's perfect. <laughs> I've known Heather for quite a while, and uh, when I knew her, she was in the retail uh, clothing business, mm -hmm. shoes, and then somewhere along the way, she ended up in <laughs> Haiti. <laughs> Why don't you tell us how that happened? Well, it was all related to the shoe business. There okay. was an organization that still exists called Souls for Soul. And it was just within the shoe industry. And what they did was they distributed shoes to orphanages, communities, people in need. And it was started by someone that was in the shoe industry. So shoe stores would do their overruns. One day they opened up their trips and two people that had stores and I saw it and I thought, what well, interesting, I'll, I'll go. Um, I was with the Kenneth Cole people and some people like that. It was 2010 and the earthquake had just hit in January. We went in fall, in the fall, which about, they say about 250,000 people died and well over 300 were injured. So it was pretty devastating. When we got there, it was like a war zone. They live in like Port-au-Prince, the capital, there's just densely populated areas where people live. Um, and, you know, they, it's the island of Hispaniola they share with Dominican Republic. So there's areas that are very densely populated, horribly poor, has been, especially since the 70s, and hardly any infrastructure in their government. There's, you know, corruption and stuff. So when the earthquake hit, you know, things just went, you know, just really totally fell Further apart. Further down. So we went, and we went on this trip, and it was great, but how this started with the Project Grace is we went to an orphanage and met these kids, and we were doing shoes, and we were leaving, and these two little girls came up, and they were just crying. I mean, boo-hooing, and I didn't speak Creole, so I'm trying to do my pig Latin Creole, trying to figure out what they're saying. Finally, someone translated, said one of the little girls wanted a baby doll, and so, you know, of course, I'm going, I'll, I'll bring you a baby doll. Sure, I'll come back. I'll bring you a baby doll. So we left. And then it was that thing that just kept gnawing at me, and I kept feeling this pull. And so I contacted the orphanage and said, I don't want to come back with an organization. I just want to come and do some stuff. And all I'm thinking is I'm going to collect baby dolls and give them to those kids. So the woman finally contacted me because you just do groups there. And she said, um, it was a very big orphanage because they had so many children that were orphaned after the earthquake. I mean, and they were turning people away. So we, she called and she said, I've got a group of just women that are not affiliated with other organizations and I've got a week, would you like to come? And I said, sure, fabulous. And she said, what do you do? I'm thinking I'm just gonna go and work in our orphanage, do whatever they want me to do. And so I said, well, I dance mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, poorly but I dance and she said perfect you'll teach dance so I said oh so I got it all together got leotards made dance skirts and then I said okay so I'm gonna go teach ballet to these kids in the orphanage not realizing kids did not know what ballet was they'd never heard of it they'd never seen it they just knew it was dance so I went a woman that I was dancing with talk to me about how to teach kids dance. Did you go by yourself? Yes, totally by myself, except these other six, five or six women that I just met, um, you know, once we got to Port-au-Prince that were doing different things. So we get there, and it is just me, and had all this stuff, had my baby dolls, <laughs> and I had a curriculum, because the woman that taught dance had said, here's how you do this. I had a curriculum, locked in the first day. There's 50, 60 kids. Wow. No one speaks, we don't speak the same language. I'm, of course, I'm thinking dance is the universal language. That didn't exactly hold true. I tried to teach a class, threw my curriculum in the paper, started in the trash, started over the next day, and we just did just improv ballet using lawn furniture for ballet bars and stuff. We had boys, girls, everybody. And, and that's nine years ago? Yes, that was um, fall of 2010. And so that was it, just me. We did it after that trip, 
trip when I realized I was in way over my head, I thought, I don't know if I can do this again. We did perform with the baby dolls. And then when I got back, I started thinking, I said, I'm going to work on this. I'm going to take a dance teacher. And that's how I started Project Grace with teaching ballet in the orphanages um, and starting out with one orphanage in Port-au-Prince and then it has grown um, from there. We went back, I got a ballet teacher to go with me. I taught some ballet, she taught some ballet and we ended up going into another orphanage, one which happened to be a lot of street children. Um, and that was- That a, had no roof over their head? They had a building, but they had grown up in the streets even before the earthquake. And what age children are we talking about? Um, the first orphanage we work in had infants up to maybe 11 year olds. Um, the street kids were all older and mostly boys, so that was an interesting class. Mm -hmm. And um, now we mostly do the, with the classes, we do ages five through, we have through five through about 16. After 16, kids are out, you know, on their own. Um, has, I, I want to talk about funding uh, mm -hmm. when we come back okay. from our break, um, because I know something has to pay for this. Yes. <laughs> and I'm assuming that in the early days, that funding came me. from your pro pocket. <laughs> Correct. Uh, Maybe we can help increase that funding. But Thank you. Stay with me. Don't go away. This is Our Issues Birmingham. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Our Issues Birmingham. I'm talking with Heather Hood, who's got a big heart <laughs> uh, and, and a dwindling pocketbook at this point. <laughs> so after the initial visit with the ballet, what came after that? We started kind of branching out, and a good friend of mine that taught yoga, I said, it would be nice if we taught yoga. And she said, well, I'll go. I'll teach yoga. So then we started, we branched out, we started doing um, ballet and yoga. Um, eventually, as after I closed my store and I was no longer able to fund it, I had an organization contact me called Traveling Tutus. They got me through blocks. They used to sell dancewear. And she said, we've got costumes and shoes and stuff, and we do it for organizations. Overruns and things. She said, I heard about you. I wanted to know if you were interested. And, you know, I was, yes, because I thought I was going to have to stop. And she said, have you thought about teaching tap? And I said, well, yes, but I've got to get tap shoes. She said, we'll send you all you want. So that's how oh, we started man. with tap. So we became tap, oh, I bet they love ballet, that. and that. The kids, some of the kids have some videos. They had some Barbie videos. There is no power there in Haiti, but they have generators. But some of the kids still see some videos. Even today? Yes, There's even no power? Today. There is government power that they rarely turn on. Um, the government power is for the people that have the money that live up in the hills. And the, all the government officials, they have power. But down in the villages and stuff, they don't have power. They do but then they've got to wire their houses. So people have no power, or if they can afford a generator, these generators. So we don't have power during the day. Where we stay has a generator, um, but we don't, they don't have power. They don't have power in the orphanages where we, where we work. Um, so a couple of, the, some of the kids had seen a Barbie Nutcracker video. So some of the children had seen a little bit of ballet, and we took ballet books and showed them pictures. When we got to tap, no one had ever heard of tap or seen it. We put on tap shoes and they just followed us. And my daughter was teaching the tap and she was saying, just watch me, just listen. Kids watch, list, picked it up, loved it. That of course is now their favorite thing. Um, so that's how we progressed into ballet, tap and yoga. And that's where we stay right now because um, we can't do everything for everything. So we, those well, are our three. That's a pretty full play. Those are our three fields. We. I store my tap shoes and ballet shoes and leotards there. The Traveling Tutu sends me costumes every year for our performance because we end with a performance. The children keep the costumes, keep their yoga pants and stuff like that and wear them. We see them, wear them to churches, wear them to events and stuff like that. Um, so they keep all of that stuff. But the other stuff I store there with an organization I work with called Project House of Hope. Um, 
Do they help you financially? No, because they, she runs, she's out in a community called Moe, which is in Lonsac, which is out on the coast, which is actually very pretty. Um, but we're on the other side of the road from the water. But she, it's, I work within her two orphanages now. Um, and that's where we primarily do, because we formed, I went to her orphanage one day and said, can I do this? Can I teach the dance? We loved it. She said, please come back. Through the years, we've become very good friends, and I now just work with her organization and her community. And so we branched out where we take some community kids that are from a feeding program mm -hmm. um, that are not in the orphanage, um, too. So I just work with her, and she, like I said, she's got a women's empowerment group and all of this. What's fun is this year, Women's Empower, I took a group of women, I taught a group of women how to sew, because they asked that, because I was there. They asked for a tap class. So this year we're adding an adult tap class. And when is your trip? Um, we leave August 12th through the 18th. So you stay a week? Yeah, we'll stay a week. Essentially a week. A week. Mm -hmm. And how many students are you up to? This year we'll have, we'll probably have about 80. Wow. I try to limit it. I tell them we work with a Haitian partner because we work within their community, and I usually try to limit it to 15 kids per class. But before I turn around, there's 25. They, they just kind of hear about it and come out, so it's pretty hard to turn them away. But So that's what we figure is probably about eight. Is it 24-7? I mean, I mean, I know you sleep at night, but we you do. have like organize, organized classes during the day? Yes, we do it in three different places because we don't have a studio. It's outside, and so we have three different places where we do the classes. It's kind of a circuit. We'll have three groups of kids, and we'll throw them in the back of their pickup truck. We take them to their yoga class, take the next one to tap, take the next one to ballet, and then rotate. And then after the class... That's the job I could do. Yeah, could you drive could. the truck. Exactly. Have you ever driven in a place like Haiti? Uh, no. No. Okay. It's interesting. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I've driven in, in a, Italy. Riding, it's interesting, well, too. Well, <laughs> riding in a truck in Haiti is interesting <laughs> enough, I, I much less that. driving. So, yeah, we do that all, and then we feed them lunch. We, when they come for their camp, they, we feed them lunch, um, too, and provide up lunch, we, water, and all Surely, that. you've now got a staff of some sort, and when I say staff, <laughs> I mean co-workers. <laughs> Co-helpers, co-people co with open hearts. Uh, um, how many of you go there? Well, we I have drugged my daughter into it many years back, Jane, so she goes every year. And Kathy, who has been my yoga instructor, those have been the three staples. We add people, and some people can come when you're dealing with people that are dance teachers that are young. They sometimes get jobs and other things and stuff, because so most of that, we, I just deal with people that want to come and we do an interview and, and do that. So I take other teachers, but pretty much it's gotten down to the board of directors are three, me, Kathy, and Jane. And that so it's just court. three of you that That's mm -hmm. primarily. Um, this done. year we've got a nice sized group. I think we've got seven or eight, but we also have other people that come and stay where we stay because they love Project Grace, it's fun with the kids and dance. So I get a few other helpers that are not part of my group that just kind of come with House of Hope. Um, That's wonderful. And, yeah, and they're there because we're, we're a lot of fun. Yeah, I bet you are, <laughs> especially in Haiti. Yes. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Uh, Heather Hood with Project Grace. Don't go away. Welcome back to Our Issues Birmingham, listening to a fascinating story uh, about uh, someone who opened up to help <laughs> those less fortunate. It's not funny. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing you're doing. Thank you. Uh, you should be proud. Pretty, there needs to be more people like it's you. It's pretty selfless. We get a lot more out of it than we give. And I know that sounds all cosmic and yeah. altruistic, but it, it is. Everyone yeah. that comes back. You so. may have some volunteers after this show. <laughs> be, uh, we'll let them know how they can get in touch with okay. you. Don't worry. Um, I don't want to talk about funding just yet. We'll, we'll close with that. But uh, under, you mentioned that you had sewing. I know you have sewing yes. talents because that's what you do uh, here locally. But what 
what do you do over there? How Those people that. don't know how to sew. Mm -mm. They never seen a needle and thread, probably. No, they, they have. Well, how the sewing came about is we were doing Project Grace with House of Hope. And she said, well, I've got a group of women and they want to sew. And they said, don't you sew? I work at Red Mountain Theater in the wardrobe department. And I said, I do sew. She said, well, will you teach them to sew? They need a source of income. People sew, the interesting thing is only men sew in Haiti. Um, that is something I probably could do. Yes. I, I can sew you a button. You can sew. Well, you got to sew a little bit better. So we, <laughs> so the sewing project, which is now under Project Grace, it is now part of Project Grace. Um, these women, we got machines donated from the sewing machine project. We got a, um, Trey Taylor ended up donating a generator because they had to run the machine somehow. Um, we got fabric, so it first started with donations, and we did that. I taught them how to do these aprons, taught them first how to use a machine, taught them how to make these little aprons. We've progressed into several bags. They make yoga bags that um, Delta Airlines donated their cargo pocket pants. They phased out their mechanic pants. We turned them into yoga bags. They're pretty cool. Um, so they, and within about mm, probably a year and a half, my group of women are self-sufficient. Um, they don't rely on donations. We rarely take them. I ask people to buy bags. Don't so these them. were older These are patients. women that are, you know, age 21 to 40. And, and where are they sewing over there? They have, they're in, they sew in the front of sort of someone's house. It's kind no, of on the No, but I mean, street. what, they sew items they make and then sell? Uh, we, yes, and then sell. Yeah, we, they're making some bags and pre, uh, we bring them back here and sell them because they don't have a place to sell there in Haiti. And so we have a website um, and I sell the bags or several different board members of House of Hope or other people. We've got them kind of scattered around. There's it, some in a store here in Birmingham. And what store? we sell the bags, it's Sozo. Sozo and, Children sells them. Uh, is that, pro the website is Project Grace? The sewing Haiti. ladies are spdlhaiti.com. It's called Sewing Project for the Development of Lanzac. So spdlhaiti.com is a sewing thing. Projectgracehaiti.com deals with the dance part, although okay. we're all one organization. So it's a perfect time to talk about funding. Yes. Uh, getting over there and back costs money. Yes. Staying there costs money. Yes. You, you sound like you've got some pretty good corporate partners uh, that are helping you with certain items. But how do you get funding well, other, we, yeah, other than just contributions from we people? We have one corporate partner, which is Traveling Tutus, <laughs> yeah. that helps us. Well, Delta. That, that does that. Um, well, Delta donated pants. It's We're, okay. Hopefully, Delta will become more of a partner. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, and I work with a woman that started the Boys and Girls Club, and she is a mechanic for Delta, so that's where that connection um, was made. But we have to, we fund it. Um, when someone says they want to come and we talk through the process, then it's up to them to raise their own money. It cost about 2000 a traveler airfare here is about 750 to 1000 and then we negotiate rates of where we stay um, we stay in a in one guest house all together it's a, a gated safe one but she but house of hope they provide our translators transportation to and from the airport security etc food we have women that come in and cook so it's we stay pretty contained um, it costs to get the costumes there once we get there we have to, we buy food and water for the kids. We also now rent the local community center for our performance today. Mm -hmm. um, we try to buy stuff locally where we can, but you know, a lot of things we bring, so it cost us extra like that. So it's about 2,000 a traveler, um, and everyone has to raise their own money. So yes, we- Well, that's just for the traveler though. That's I mean, just, just, just to get there, that's just bare bones um, right there. Um, but you need additional funding to do what you're doing over there, I would think. Yes. Like to pay for the food that the people the are cooking. Kids, the, the kids, they're, they're cooking, the things the kids are eating. And also I hit, one of the problems I hit is I'll get dance teachers that are young women and young men. They are working 24-7. They can't raise the money or their studios don't have it. And so it would be delightful if I could fund them because I have teachers that want to go it's them trying to get the money. 
um, to go. And that's pretty much the everything is, you know, say we'll try to just try to fund it from um, that. So can someone that's listening to this show who wants to open their wallet yes, to can. you, how would they go about doing yes, that? Yes, they can. Um, and we are a certified 501c3 um, charitable, charitable organization. Um, if you go to projectgracehaiti.com, you'll see links to connect to me, how to buy bracelets that we sell year round for our fundraisers. We have these beautiful bracelets. <laughs> you had a little Vanna White uh, going just, for just you. Just a little bit, and my friends back here are all sporting bracelets. I'm surprised you don't have one, Mr. Spina. <laughs> um, but we do that as a year round fundraiser. But yes, if you go to projectgracehaiti.com, um, we also have Facebook page Project Grace, and I'm, I'm Heather Hood. We're all easy to find, and yes, I have. And there's a donate accept, button on there. Yes, there is, and I, we accept donations, and they're greatly appreciated. Well, thanks for being with us. Well, thank uh, you, Tommy. You're a beautiful soul. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> there needs to be more people like you in this world, myself included. Well, uh, uh, I'm serious. You're going to go with me soon. I, I might. Yeah, I might. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I might. We'll oh, yeah. find some time. Thanks for being <laughs> with us. This is Our Issues Birmingham. We'll see you next week.